Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Bellaz and today I'm joined by Elizabeth Hazard joining us from Portland, Oregon in the States as our recently certified quantum soul guidance practitioner. Welcome, Elizabeth. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Likewise, we are recording this today on the 17th of October 2024 in very much wrapped in the energetics of the full moon in Aries. Uh, so feeling very ambitious and aligned with the visions and the possibilities of what can be uh, done and created. So I'm just so uh, happy to have Elizabeth here. As a valued member uh, member of our Quantum Soul Guidance community, um, I think you've been with us for a good two years, yeah, right? Probably two, oh, coming close to two and a half now. Very yeah. good. And you received your certification on 21st of April, 2024, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, you've done an amazing pre presentation, I think, a year ago for the community on um, holographic fractals and uh, galactic DNA, such a rich packed in um, information that is still available to our Quantum Soul Guidance uh, course members. Um, and I'm happy to see that you secured the domain name called Hologra uh, holofractalsoulintegration.com, as you can see on the uh, Zoom name. That's Elizabeth's website. Um, so you're quite passionate about um, the holographic fractal universe and i hope we can bring that into the conversation and how you are we weaving that into your uh, galactic astrology client sessions um, how that fits in into the bigger picture of what we are really trying to achieve here as a collective uh, when, when we apply galactic astrology and expand our consciousness and kind of uh, reclaim our universal or cosmic um, citizenship so where would you like to start in terms of sharing your journey of rapid consciousness expansion? Is that something that occurred early on or you had like a breakthrough as we often hear in these um, practitioner stories? Please tell us more about your journey. You know, I would say it's both. It's like, I do feel like I came in really, like honestly, early, early childhood, really ready to make sense out of the reality I was living in. And I found that to be quite frustrating because there weren't a lot of answers about what we, who and what we are and why we are. And um, so I, I just, I don't know, I was just constantly wondering and exploring different things. And it was like, by the time I was in high school, I started getting into some different kinds of healing modalities, learning about healing, learning about mind-body connection. Um, and then when I was in, I really chose the career of becoming um, a healer, massage therapist, and then specifically shiatsu practitioner. Pretty young. I was began that journey at age 19. So I've been practicing shiatsu for over 30 years now and spent a great deal of time really tapping into other people's energy, you know, which is, you know, you're doing this kind of shiatsu, you're feeling through the holographic mapping system of the physical body, which is the meridians, you're tapping into this person um, at the level of chi, which I now understand to really be that quantum field or the unified field more accurately, uh, or zero point energy. So I spent so much time just tuning in. It really led me to a lot of um, kind of epiphanies and awakenings. And then eventually started studying with a teacher who specifically created a type of shiatsu she called quantum shiatsu. And her name was Pauline Sasaki. So she was a living master of shiatsu and I had the opportunity to study a great deal with her um, until the end of her life. And she, she was kind of experiencing what so many people do who spend all this time tapping in and paying close attention to the energetic system of the human body with another person. It's kind of like meditating on their frequency. And so she was wanting to understand more about this phenomena that were coming up during sessions, you know, downloads 
and all this information that was coming through. So she decided to study quantum physics and develop technique based on those technique and theory based on those physics as a way to become more intentional about how you're interacting with um, the other person. So I studied a great deal with her. I had kind of a remarkable experience when I first met her actually, where um, I had seen a an intuitive person for guidance and they were tell I was really like, where am I going with this thing? You know, I was in my, I think very early thirties and I was kind of like, I'm doing body work, but I didn't really get into this just to like massage people and fix their muscles. And she was like tuning in. She said, there's this thing inside of you. And it's like shaped. It was like this, it's like a cross. And then mm-hmm. a, it's like almost like a three-dimensional asterisk, Right. And she's like, I just keep hearing the word alignment, 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 alignment. Your guides just keep saying alignment. And she's like, it's in you. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's lining up at the level of the heart, right? And um, you use this to do the work that you do, right? So I'm like, okay, cool. And I didn't know what to make of it, but I was excited. And then I went and did my first training with Pauline. And she's got this room full of people. Everyone's excited. And she says she's talking about alignment and she'd been talking about it, but I wasn't making the connection. I'm like, you know, I don't know. And then all of a sudden she stops. She has her like paper that she's writing on, like making notes on for everyone. And she says, look, it's like this. She's like, like she starts drawing this symbol kind of aggressively on this piece of paper. She's like, it is like this. It's like, it goes this way and this way and this way. And it's in you. It's part of you. And with this, this is your alignment. And this, this is what the woman had said to me in the reading. She goes, and like spokes from a wheel, it expands in all directions as you develop your abilities. Right. And then Pauline says the same thing. She goes, and like spokes from a wheel. And she's just like, come on, people. And I'm sitting there going, she was literally saying the exact same words. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, I am in the right place. I don't need to ask anymore. Am I in the right place? Am I on the right path? So this was very much the right path. And it was what I've come to understand even about that symbol is when you start looking at the architecture of the unified field of space time of the zero point field, it fits into a geometry at the very center of each point coming together, you have what's called a vector equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And you could really see that embedding in the heart through like even the Kabbalistic tree of life geometry that it really physically is there creating this alignment. And so this field of energy and the geometry of it is continuous with these, these points in the zero point field where all the geometries come together perfectly. And that's a Buckminster Fuller terminology, but it's the vector equilibrium is really the zero point because from there, that vector equilibrium does this thing they call jitterbugging, where it basically does this little flip flopping from quantum vacuum fluctuations. I'm going way too far with this quantum vacuum fluctuations, but it's like popping out these platonic solids so that we start to actually experience like the material world. But from there, you know, when we find that zero point of the heart and we find it continuously repeating um, throughout the field, it kind of explains what that alignment really is. Sorry, was that too much? <laughs> no, not at all. I follow. Uh, it's fascinating to hear direct experience validating certain teachings or visions or downloads that people have when you when you when something comes to you unbeknownst of uh, the concept already existing out there. It, it's with you, but you're kind of like, yeah, maybe whatever. And then it starts coming at you and you're still not really receiving and claiming it. So then the guides literally become the embodiment of whoever is the <laughs> avatar. And they're like, no, here it is. Like I was really feeling that uh, yeah. passion of the spiritual guides that may be working with you as they came through those teachers to say, you've got to pay attention to this. This is important. You, yes. uh, so you hold that, you hold that within your being. Yeah. Um, it's, I really want to connect it to your galactic astrology yeah. chart already at this time. Um, is, is it all right if I share it? Please. Um, yeah. 
Yesterday, we, we had amazing um, Q&A call with our Quantum Soul Guidance community, and we talked about the whales uh, coming up a lot in the consciousness within our community, and in particular, we then zoomed in on the Cetus constellation, the whale, the sea monster, and we then talked about Matthias de Stefano's chart and the mystery of it, and... Uh, later that evening, I, I looked again at his chart and looked at his lunar nodes and his north node is at three degrees of Aries, which is conjunct uh, the same star that your Mercury, natal Mercury at three degrees of Aries is conjunct uh, Deneb Kytos, which is a star in Cetus constellation. Uh, it is at the tail of the whale, uh, the sea monster. And what I found um, fascinating or just this beautiful divine synchronicity of how mythology is intertwined with our direct human life experience and how we operate. Um, so this star in Chinese mythology is known as master of constructions or another translation for the Chinese name of the star is superintendent of earthworks. So... For any of the viewers, if they listen to your language, how you express yourself and how I know you for two years, how passionate you are about the energetics, the, the structure of the universe and how it is inside us on, on infinite levels, really the fractal holographic, it's such a perfect terminology for that. And so for anyone who also knows Matthias De Stefano, how he operates and how passionate he is about the energetics and really consciously working with it, for him, his North Node is in the fourth house, if we have the correct ascendant in Capricorn. So he's very much working with the earth grids, the earth energetics, yeah. master of constructions. For you, it's in your Mercury and you also have a stelium in Gemini. So you're very passionate about uh, information, knowledge, and then communicating that. It's like in your fifth house, I believe, um, in Placidus house system, but sixth house in whole sign house system. So either way, it's through your creative, communicative self-expression that you are meant to bring this type of information forward so that we can more consciously realize the magnificent um, cosmic creation, how perfect the order is, even in the seeming chaos. There's something really powerful that I believe occurs on so many levels in our human experience when we start paying attention to these structures. It really awakens something really powerful in our DNA. The memory starts coming in. And if any of the viewers ever um, lived as initiates of these higher orders, uh, higher order wisdom, the, the, these memories will start coming through once you start working with these patterns. And I'm sorry for going on for a little bit longer. Yeah. Even um, people who would take time to draw... Uh, sacred geometry as you do it as your mind focuses on it something magical is happening on a on a dna level on a on 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 a soul level the activations of memories of something that is really primal yes. force within yes. our being and known universe so i'm just i was so excited for for you coming on here and for me to have the opportunity and the honor to introduce you to to the community here so i'm well, so excited it's interesting, that you're going you know back. you're bringing up the way that the drawing of the geometries can like open up these kind of codes inside of us because um one of my big passions you know is very clearly unified physics and part of the mission for me around awakening galactic citizenship and intelligence understanding who we are mm -hmm. in the context of a larger fractal of our universe is that we are it's required that we understand the physics of reality and that they're not separate from the spiritual world they describe the spiritual world and mm -hmm. so when we are off in these what we think are these little fantasy worlds of spiritual visions and whatnot where we are somewhere in reality having a real experience and mm -hmm. as we start to understand the real physics that describe it it does function to open these key codes for humanity for the process of the planetary ascension that is required for us to really move forward and get through this next evolutionary step that's probably opening into this age of Aquarius, um, that we're getting this kind of momentum on as Pluto enters Aquarius. But it's really fascinating to me what happens as I continue to understand this, and I'll see it through the chart itself. I see where um, the geometry of space time is really like clicking away to create a particular alignment at a moment of birth so that you have this, um, 
entanglement nexus in your mm. physical body through the geometry of space time that literally creates a micro wormhole between you and the information of another planet where you have formally incarnated. Um, and so, and formerly is kind of an interesting word in terms of time, but you have incarnated there and it is an instant, there's an, there's an, uh, a, an eternal and infinite feedback loop with you and those moments. And so like for us now, it's so important that we download this information, that we actually have the whole of fractal soul integration happening because we have existed on planets that have already gone through the ascension process. Mm. It's not exactly the same as ours because fractality is self-similarity. We still have very unique work to do here on planet Earth, but the process, the larger framework of the process is the same. And that self-similarity can be used and that soul memory can be used to activate within the individual so that they become much more aligned with what they're doing here on planet earth. And it plays out in an infinite number of ways through humanity, but remembering ourselves. And like, as we sit in this Arcturus gateway, for instance, as the sun is conjunct Arcturus, I mean, this is a, a group of consciousness that are here to support. And if we can come into better alignment and better memory, which is really how we're experiencing time itself, so, so we open the fractal and we get into a larger, a larger fractal experience of ourselves, which align, which requires the alignment of the central channel to go up and out, right? That, what is that? Right. That's ascension. It's ascension. So the yes. ascension is the expansion through the central channel up to occupy a larger uh, fractal domain. And then within that, you are now able to communicate with all the points in the field that are corresponding to who you are right now and you have the um biological hardware to you know receive it and transmit the information to be in communication with it but it requires that the consciousness opens up and this requires that we do all sorts of different practices to do this including galactic astrology and meditation and qhht and all of these mm. shiatsu all the things but these codes that are are the physics, that are the discovery of the cosmological constants that unify the field at all scales are specifically, I believe, what's required. And this is based on the work of Nassim Haramein. He's the founder of the Inter uh, International Space Federation. I've had a really incredible opportunities to study with him and travel on some of his incredible journeys and learn directly. And every time it's like a huge upgrade for me in at a soul level at an intelligence level and his work is really so deeply needed right now and it's it's incredible i love that you're bringing him in which of the sacred sites did you have the opportunity to visit with nasim's uh, group and teachings i was able to go in 2022 which was really a precursor to deciding to do this program i went to tulum and so we were at chichen itza and the tulum ruins and we went into some cenotes and did activation work there working specifically with some of his biotechnology he has created a really amazing form of um, biotech it's called an arc crystal i always wear these because they are tapping into the quantum vacuum fluctuations, but they are, you know, a type of technology that we can use in those exact spaces to start reconnecting the grids of the planet, but then learning the physics at the same time. So we started, I did the Tulum trip. Before that, I actually did a big conference in, um, in um, California in 2019. He did this resonance retreat and there were a great deal of different presenters, including, um, he was presenting, and a guy named Adam Apollo presented, um, Marshall Lefferts, who wrote the book Cosmometry, um, Robert Grant was there. It was really phenomenal. And it was kind of like another part of my awakening was just hearing all these different people and being in this group of awakened souls. And then last spring, I went to um, Greece with he and Dr. Lydia de Leon and her husband, um, Arturo Ponce de Leon, who are, they're both... Um, they are architects, but she has a PhD in understanding the 
geophysical and um, anomalies and all the different things and the geometries that go into creating like temples and sacred spaces. And then the celestial link. So she does look at all of that stuff too. So yeah, long answer. Uh, that's brilliant to hear that the archaeologists um, also expand their uh, understanding of the cosmos and the stars and all that. Yes. There's so much epic, so much epic stuff is happening on Earth. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What did you start noticing as you uh, started applying galactic astrology into your one-on-one -on -one interaction with your clients? What transpires in the experiences um, well, as you guide others? So when someone is, you know, interested and open, and many people are people who I seem like they find me so-called randomly, but actually nobody's there on accident. It's fascinating how many people are just totally ready to connect about this stuff who are theoretically coming in for shiatsu and acupuncture, but mm -hmm. I will run their chart. And what I started to look at in myself and in others is how the chart can be looked at through the Kabbalistic tree of life geometry. So this can be overlaid on the chakra system where you look at this geometry and you see it lining up with all the different chakras and each of the nodes or sephira on the tree of life correspond to a different planet. And then if we look then at the planet and its fixed star alignment, we start to see that we're through the, because this really is a piece of the geom of the whole geometry is this tree of life. So this is part of how we embed on the field. And now where these nodes that correspond to the planets that when where they were at birth are now creating this entanglement nexus with those past locations of or other locations of our soul experience. So in a sense, it creates this way to tune in through the physical body. So like, for instance, for me with Arcturus um, opposing my son in this moment, I have this opportunity through a polarity really to connect into Arcturus through my heart chakra. And that's really like a portal for me for the Arcturian energy and frequency. And so this is true for like the like Saturn and Neptune are kind of hanging out here. Oh, you've got that up. Thank you. So there you've got Saturn and Neptune aligning with the um, third eye chakra. And they're kind of like a yin and yang bifurcation of the expression of the energies of the third eye chakra. And then you've got uh, Jupiter and Mars connecting with the throat. As, again, they bifurcate into yin yang, but you've got the synthesis of yin yang. And there's more than one way of doing this. Some people do those top three sephira or top four in a different, or actually they kind of switch Pluto and, and Uranus. I, I really resonate with Pluto at the crown, but I think everybody, I don't think, I think it's fractal. So there's just nested layers of reality and I may change my mind someday. But, um, so then, you've got the sun at the heart chakra in the center there. And then you've got Mercury and Venus bifurcating at the, at the solar plexus. And you've got the moon at the sacral chakra. And that bottom one is the earth connecting to the root and the earth star chakra. The, the Uranus is interesting because it represents the awakening. It's like the awakener. And it's the doth point that when activated, it drops down into the central singularity of the heart. And it becomes a non-local trans-temporal outside of time and space point in the subtle anatomy or not so subtle anatomy. Because when we say this, it's subtle anatomy. It's real. It's at a level that's so small that we can't perceive it. But it is not nothing. <laughs> It's not just imagined. It's, it's very, very real. But anyway, so it, as it awakens, it opens up into, um, pure sentience because now we are connected into kind of the all through that point. And, be, and it, so those alignments are very interesting when you start thinking about how they represent the awakening of the. the Absolutely. Soul. I'm so happy to do you work with this. There is such powerful activation when we work with this Merkaba tree. And I just want to um, say to any viewers who ever seen different versions of this Merkaba um, geometry, uh, sorry, the tree of life, Kabbalistic uh, uh, tree of life. It does actually fit into a Merkaba, interestingly enough. There's some I'm sure, yes. ways that you can drop it in yeah. and it becomes yeah. a Merkaba. And there's actually eight that fit together, which yes. does actually create that galactic human um soul matrix 
Soul Matrix, yes. Which is the uh, what I want to say is that in case anyone sees different versions of it, where maybe, as you said, the planets may be uh, laid out differently. I also have seen a versions where uh, different stars are uh, aligned to different uh, points of this matrix. Uh, I just want to invite individuals to take time to go within their own being and decide for themselves what resonates and what doesn't. Uh, because when we start seeing different variations of things, it can... Um, it can... Um, create confusion or frustration, mm -hmm. I would reframe that as an invitation to go within and decide for our own sovereign uh, experience of, of the sacred geometries and see what works at any given time. And also realize like now when I see, I used to think, oh, you know, you, when we're first learning, we can be a little more rigid, but we don't want to become dogmatic in the way we think about things. We want to be open to learning and growth. And so if I see a different template, I really literally look at it as like another fractal layer of information that we can use for, and then we think, what is the purpose of that fractal layer? How are we using it? Now, as this different way of working with the template, what is it doing for us? And then, so then we start to become more intentional about, you know, if it does, if there, I've seen ones, yeah, where it connects like Sirius to one of these and, you know, the Galactic Center and all these different alignments. And it's, that has an intention coded into it that you can activate and work with. So it's kind of saying like, what's, what am I, what do I want to do with the template? And the same message applies to um, coming across different information uh, connected to different star systems, where one source says that there's these benevolent beings connected to a star system, and the other source would say, no, it's malevolent beings. So what is the truth? Uh, for you, as you tune into the soul records, based on what's most relevant for you, it may be A, B, or C. So just, again, allow that um, fractalization acceptance and different timelines uh, being relevant at different points of different individuals as uh, evolutionary souls journey just it's all okay right and if we're looking at the the concept of planetary ascension you could look at a planet based on where at what point in the timeline so to speak did you tap in what if it was before yeah. the, what if you tapped into the like Arcturians before they achieved planetary ascension? They may have been mm -hmm. going through some very difficult growing pains that didn't always bring out the best qualities. I don't know. It's a possibility, right? And so we kind of say, oh, these are the, there's no good and bad. Let's just kind of take that out of the thought process and look more towards, because think of it this way. I was thinking of this in our, in our class yesterday or in our Q and A. When we think about these, so-called malevolent beings. What if we thought of them the way we think of our children that we're raising? Now, mm -hmm. my one of my kids woke up acting like a real little monster this morning. Now, I could be <laughs> like, what's wrong with him? Why is he a little Aries. jerk? But the really, <laughs> right, right. And he's an Aries. He's got my same birthday. Um, so he's in it. <laughs> but I could say, I could be like, what's wrong with him? Or I could judge him. But what do we do as the mother? We say, what's going on with him? So even when we are dealing with very difficult growing pains on a planet, what's going on with humanity? What's going on with this aspect of humanity that's deeply struggling? It's not bringing out the best in them. But what is, is the process to just be like categorically you're wrong and bad or are we going to learn and grow? Yeah, I love that. Thank you for bringing that in. Um, with your... Galact uh, with your website so um, hollow fractal soul integration uh, dot com what types of sessions do you offer is it online video uh, written reports what are you offering at the moment um, all of the above really so I, I will do a written report and then it's not like super long but pretty comprehensive written report and then I will do a video like a Zoom meeting like this and deliver the report, which is always fun, as you know, because a lot comes through in person. Yeah. So right now I've got kind of like the big, the big complete session. I've also will work with transits for people. And with those, I'll do work with both um, giving a reading and a written report, but I'll also be doing energetic work with the person so they can help them 
activate the DNA that's associated with each of these different um, portals, or so to speak, or the the um, those nodes, the sephira on the tree of life. So if, you know, say we're doing an activation for someone during this Arcturus gateway, we have the opportunity to do help do DNA activation at that point as well, which really is saying that you and your body have um, biological um, biophysics of your physical body literally connect through the field into the morphogenetic field of that other planet. So the DNA activation kind of happens where you are literally doing the holofractal soul integration. You're reconnecting through that fractal antenna of the DNA with an aspect of you in the field connected to that planetary intelligence and allowing yourself to receive the memories and also the upgrades to the system where you become kind of um, able to bring on higher levels of your intuitive abilities, your mental capabilities, physical healing, and all these things could be possible at that point. So I'll do that part. I'm also creating a product right now that I believe should be launching very, very soon, probably by the time this is out, that will be really, truly just a purely ascension-oriented reading with um, just looking at both of the aspects, the, the natal chart in relationship to now and how your personal mission relates in um, through the, the whole of fractal soul integration reading. So that one's coming soon. That's and, exciting. Yeah. Anything else? I, oh, I do. Um, I do activations and I do little classes, sometimes free, sometimes paid. So if you want to come and listen to me talk about this kind of stuff, um, channeling really channeling yes it's so fun and we usually have a meditation activation aspect of it um going into connect through our our chakras and our dna into these different planetary systems to receive upgrades i'm realizing how wonderful it is that through life you are guided and trained in practice of shiatsu and chinese medicine and the acupuncture really fine-tuning your um, ability and your senses to tune into the, mer the meridians and the grid work of the physical human body mm -hmm. and what an amazing foundation for you then expanding your consciousness to the cosmic frequencies and how they can perfectly align and match and activate and uh, the, the grid in the body so I believe, I presume uh, very naturally as you do this work that it's kind of like a magical thing that is unique to you as you work with people that these things kind of just are clear to you. Um, you can just kind of sense it, feel it, know it because you've done um, two decades of uh, working with the grid work of the human body. Would right. you say that magic kind of unfolds itself as you work with people? It does. It does. Yeah. It's kind of incredible. Um, it, it was really fun because I would get these downloads about galactic origins for my patients over the years. And now I can like kind of get confirmation through the chart. And then, wow. you know, it's it, as you're working with it, I also have been able to look at how the meridian system, because it's based on time, um, is kind of ticking along and there are these meridian alignments with these different galactic alignments. So we can use the acup acupuncture mapping system to facilitate the connection because literally mm -hmm. this, this, these physics describe a hundred percent of everything. Like there's nothing that's not described by the physics. We may need, we may end up knowing more, but they're there. And the unification basically means that like everything that we're understanding about Chinese medicine were literally pieces of information that these, you know, ancient humans who likely had a great deal of galactic hybrid in them um, were getting these downloads, these, these ancient um, classics of Chinese medicine. They're pretty interesting. And I find it fascinating too, that some of the, um, you know, like Huang Di, who wrote the inner classic, uh, the Yellow Emperor's inner classic, was considered an immaculate conception mm. right and he's wow, having a conversation I never knew that to this yeah thing. his his writings are him talking to this guy called chibo who is i believe like some kind of ascended master that he's doing a little chit chat with and it's basically all these places on earth right these different um mm. the pyramids all of the information the ancient knowledge throughout the throughout the planet these were galactic interventions that came in and gave humanity yeah. the the keys and the clues on how to 
basically decode the universe so that we can we can do this next step and free energy is part of about connectivity yes and so part of it is the personal ascension yes so we have personal ascension you know happening but we also have you know a free energy device that's necessary as we decode this and we understand these physics and we also have gravitational control we can't get anywhere without the free energy and if we don't understand what gravity is in the first place yeah exciting times uh there'll be so much um so many revelations uh in, in these fields over the next decade yeah. um the word shakina keeps uh, coming through and i do want to bring it in because you did um have a wonderful presentation on on the spirit of the mm-hmm. shakina and in fact as we chatted about the uh about your name and the meaning of your name elizabeth mm-hmm. how is it the beth uh, yes. part that the that, that means mhm it's interesting would you like to bring that through Yeah. So one of the things that's been kind of fascinating for me is I mean I grew up with no religious background whatsoever but there really has been a lot of like information that's come through the lens of like through the Jewish mysticism in all these different ways the information about the merkaba the information about the tree of life um this the shekina um many more things many more but um when I So in 2012 like 12 21 12 I was in a session with one of my my patients doing some of this off body energetic work that I that I learned through the quantum shiatsu but then it kind of went further but I'm doing this session and as I'm starting to get this sense of this next kind of level of upgrade to the human energy system that's coming through and what i what what i first saw was this geometry of like a a dove like this sacred dove geometry and i had no clue what it was and as that came through i had this sense of i was already working with virtual dna activation so working with what we call that so called junk dna which is the non coding or non protein forming dna that likely is really not drunk at all and very very much mm. something and has a purpose. Sure. So I had been working with this 12 strand DNA where there were six or yeah, six pair of DNA. And then it came through that maybe that there were like five more pair, but then I realized oh actually they're they're triple helix. There's actually three strands of DNA that it wasn't until a long time later. This is how it works for me where I went, "Oh, It's actually 11 triads. That's an interesting number, especially when you mm-hmm. look at that tree of life yes. geometry. There's 10 sphere and then the 11th would be the doth point. That kind of works into that template for me. Um and that um that it was 33 strands altogether, which is a very significant kind of spiritual number. So I found that to be kind of interesting, but this yeah, shakina, which I I found out later that the dove itself was the shakina um and the shekina being um that divine indwelling feminine spirit that really is in some some traditions refer to it as the holy spirit but it's that divine presence the and the inner universe so when you were talking about the you know macrocosm microcosm it's really like how you experience the frequency of um consciousness or or we call it divine presence but it's really like that very very refined frequency of source how we, essence essence how it's embedding within the the physical body and even in mm. that geometry of the tree of life it's considered like the they call it the lightning bolt it's like mm. she is moving through all those stations of the kabbalistic tree of life and you know facilitating this um awakening experience but yeah when i did some work to try to decode the meaning of my name elizabeth um i first i looked at l meaning it refers to like angel or messenger and then isa i one place i looked it was talking about it being connected into light or light codes but also kind of a reference to the goddess isis and her relationship to the seeding of certain bloodlines even in through humanity and i've had a lot of like really interesting connection into her energy um so like there was like the sort of the light, maybe we could call it the light codes of isis and then the beth is the 
indwelling spirit that really is a reference to the Shekinah, which is a way of putting it, that it is our indwelling spirit, our divine presence. So together, it's like the messenger of light codes of the indwelling spirit and the embodiment of those, like becoming the activated human um, or like the true activated star seed. Because we, mm-hmm. many of us have these, we all have these connections in our chart, but it's really about the awakening process to them and beginning to activate and work with that energy, I, I guess. And that's exciting. What's why I love doing this work. Like it could not be more exciting to me to sit and discover this with another person and see it's almost like your soul legacy, even because you have this like soul history where you've been moving through all these different types of experiences, both at the galactic humanoid level, but at all different fractals of existence. And there's these signature elements to your soul that kind of tie these things together and kind of solve this mystery that we can kind of awaken to in this lifetime and begin to start working more directly with. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you for reporting it so so um, delicately. <laughs> Do When you first saw your own galactic uh, placements, was there anything that stood out for you? I'll just call out that you have your Pluto at zero degrees of Libra, conjunct supergalactic center. Your midheaven in Leo is uh, um, conjunct um, Hydra, mm-hmm. Alpha, start Alphard. Um, you have Mars, uh, Venus, conjunct Aldebaran. Um, you have Andromedan stars conjunct. Your ascendant is on the Acrux, very spiritual star. Your part of fortune activated today through Arcturus. Uh, so very, very potent um, galactic astrology. Was there anything that... Do you remember that moment when you first saw your yeah. alignments? Was there any sense of... What was the experience like for you? Well, I had had a sense of three different star systems that I felt a connection to and through like doing like meditation and like kind of remembering process. I have kind of like, you know, I don't know when you're in download mode or whatever. So I, um, I had a connection. I felt a strong connection to Arcturus and I did actually know that I was, my birthday was around that, that gateway, but I felt a strong connection into that. And then I had really been drawn into Sirius through my connection to Isis. And that Mm. shows up in some trines and sextiles in my chart. So that was like, yeah. And I did have the sense that of that connection into the mystery schools in the, in Sirius a, um, and then the other one was Andromeda really strongly. I had a very strong sense of myself, um, with memories of being, um, in Andromeda, And so when I saw it, you know, it was like everything was there. And then, of course, so much more to learn. And then as I explored, I've gotten really interested in understanding those supergalactic points. I've got, you know, quite a few of them in my chart. And that supergalactic center at Pluto does make a lot of sense in terms of like kind of getting into that kind of download mode at times, Mm. Um, connecting into high levels of fractality is what I think that it does when Mm. we feel into it. And if it's up there in the crown, in the way that I work with it, it's like you just open up the crown and you are in this like sort of multiverse super highway, potentially. I don't know. Um, I love it. Yeah. And I love, love seeing it. For you in your 11th of whole sign house so it's really working on a collective mm. subconscious level for you very very powerful mm-hmm. um force there um there is one more star actually that is not I- included in our calculator yet it's um conjunct your north node actually uh 25 degrees of aries the star is alfred in pisces constellation and also the mythology connected to that is the one that understands the songs of the sea the pouring of the water Mm. wisdom wait you said 25 wisdom. degrees aries uh yes that's my son oh your son oh yes, yes. son yeah. son yeah, yeah. Oh, so wait, i so thought soon. that was another beautiful validation so alfred star in pisces yeah. conjunct son the one who reveals the mysteries who understands the song of the sea oh interesting so, mm-hmm. you Isn't know that- as a beautiful. child my dad sails and we mm-hmm. spent a lot of time like we would live on a on our sailboat for like a month at a time sometimes in the wow summer. goosebumps so the sun can represent the father as well and then that star yes. oh. literally manifesting this way it's just epic i love it well and interesting too with like sadis um that you were talking about that star you know when i was like 
17, my best friend and I helped my dad and a friend sail our boat from Victoria to Astoria. So it was like a 48 hour, like overnight sailing adventure. When we first got out to sea, we came into this pod of orca, a multiple. There were at Uh least 30, 30 around the boat and there were babies Mm -hmm. and they were just, it was like, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about this. Here I was on this like sea journey with my father connecting with these um incredible animals and we just couldn't believe it like it's what i mean i'd only seen a whale maybe here or there very occasionally and to just come into this it just felt like really powerful i still kind of try to imagine i'm there and getting the that must have been very very special i had orcas coming through in my dream state and it was such a awesome activation i'll never forget it uh so i can I'm so glad you you had that experience. Beautiful. Yeah. Excellent. Well, is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience in terms of perhaps how you view the Quantum Soul Guidance community or the course material, given Mm. considering everything else that you've studied before? What is your take on um, for anyone who might be considering um, this modality? I feel that it's just... what What I really love is that it has created this opportunity to explore and learn as exactly who I am, to let it, it has been able to unfold in my own experience in a way that is like absolutely authentic and unique to me. And then the community Mm -hmm. is just here in this incredible support of everybody having their own experience. There's so much love in the community I mean, that alone has been just like the greatest gift. There's this for for you, Julia, you know, you offer this very, very high level of integrity and loving wisdom for the group that is setting a precedent for how this type of teaching can even happen. I feel like I'm a teacher. I've learned a lot from you about that just as an example. And I'm deeply grateful to it because it's like, yes, this is how it needs to be done. This is the, this is the new earth paradigm on this type of community and this type of teaching. Um, Uh, For me, you know, I have a very um, unique brain that hasn't always been easy to work with in very, like, um, conventional learning environments. I've managed to get through it. I got a, you know, master's in Chinese medicine and all of that. But I feel like I hacked into my brain, like in this way where I decoded how my brain works and how I best learn in the way that Mm -hmm. this is all put together in this open endedness, but like deep interest and deep motivation, all of these different ways that you can go with this information and like make it really like the journey that is totally authentic to who you are. Like I, I mean, here I am constantly weaving in the physics and that's just one way to do this of many infinite paths with the information. But yeah, it's, it's, it, it is a journey of supporting humanity, but also unfolding your own, your own soul journey at the same time, which really should go hand in hand anyway. Thank you. I love and appreciate that. I also just realized you have an Instagram account. Is that right? Yes. Holofractal Soul Integration. So people can find you there yeah. too. And I'll really look forward and to... And Facebook too. Yeah. So I'll look forward to um, your offerings and sharings as you discover uh, epic things, I'm sure, along the way. So um, again, it's just such an honor uh, for me to share this space with you, introduce you to the community. And I feel excited for anyone who will feel guided to connect with you and uh, decode their own galactic astrology chart and really become activated on their journey and um, supporting our collective um, endeavor of the ascension and um, remembering and integration of our galactic origins. And uh, I really feel like we are um, supporting the universal healing and harmony and greater connectivity. So um, such an honor to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. Total honor for me as well. How wonderful. And thank you all for watching. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Much love to all. Take care. Thank you.